So on this bike, I've never taken it apart before other than just the floorboard. Um, but we've got the oil out of the bike and we are going to pop this guy in. I'm sure it won't run perfect, but uh, at least we can make a video on how to get it in. So this is our new DCR cam um, and it's ground as far as you can take it. Uh, so what we're gonna do, I'm hoping the valve cover gasket should be fine being that it has 300 miles on it. I'm gonna start by kind of taking these panels off over here. Um, probably pulling the bulk of the bike apart, honestly. The other option is to take the engine out of the bike, um, but even if we do that, we still kind of need access to this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by just seeing how to take this stuff apart. Again, uh, first time with this bike as far as taking the side panels off, accessing the head. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on that. cover off which is actually pretty cool um here for looks like spark spark plug change valve adjustment um but i really think with this um you could probably do it from here but i'm gonna go ahead and take out the seat bucket to gain access from the top like i said you could probably do the job from here um, i don't see a whole lot of benefit in taking this panel off just because there's a metal frame here anyways and you've got looks like a charcoal canister there um which kind of be nice to get out of the way um but anyhow, you've got kind of a lot of stuff in here. So this panel is not really gonna help you a whole lot. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and take this seat bucket off here, which should gain us a little bit more access. Yeah, actually it wouldn't really be that hard to do the cam just like this, honestly. Um, I'm gonna take the seat bucket off anyways to get a better look at this bike. Let's see if the other side is easy to pop off because maybe if we access the other side then we don't have to take the top off. Oh, this one doesn't have a cover, bummer. Yeah, let's pull the seat bucket off. Looks like we've got these clips here. Oh, what do we got here? I did not to pull all that stuff off because after looking at it a little bit more, um, it's only gonna get me access to here, which is not gonna be a drastic help. And it's actually pretty good uh, visibility and the top looks like it's gonna be a total nightmare to get off. So let's go ahead and see if I can access everything from here. If it's not gonna work, then We'll go ahead and change gears, but I think I can make it work. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and just take off your four 10 millimeter bolts here for your cylinder head valve cover. Pretty easy to access, honestly. It's nice, it's all new and clean. No leaks, no mess. We also have a um, bunch of transmission parts coming. We've got a few big board kits. We have a couple cam options. Um, but I'm just excited to try this one first off, just to see um, what the gains are. So for these two on the back side, I recommend a deep, uh, deep 10 millimeter on the back side. Um, all the way around actually be better so you can clear the valve cover here. So yeah, you guys definitely want to use a, a deep 10. Um, shallow 10 is a little bit too hard to get to these, um, get to the back side here. Just gonna go ahead and feel my way around inside this thing. Once the valve cover comes off, everything should be really, really easy to get to. Really visible. Should be able just to pull this valve cover off and just kind of set it aside. Um, yeah, and here you've got all your little clips here in this area and then your four bottom bolts. One more bolt up here. Nice, they put in this little access spot here. But yeah, in theory, this thing should just, just pop right off now. There it goes. A little bit of oil probably. Nope. So we'll have to take the other side apart because the cam chain is on the other side. All right, bummer. You shock, you shock yourself? Yeah, I did. How'd that feel? 12 volts. <laughs> 12 volts at, you can't shock yourself with 12 volts. Ooh, I just did. <laughs> we had a, a Chinese bike in here and I don't know, but the CDI, so I want the CDI and we heard the snapping and we could see, we have a video, there's like a four inch arc. It was, you'd try to start it. And it was arcing just with the ignition on, not even running. And it was arcing like this far from the CDI wow. to the frame. Yeah, it was, it was pretty impressive. All right, I'm gonna take this whole bike apart because uh, apparently that's the only way to do this job. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can't just disassemble this whole bike. 
one piece at a time. All this stuff here. You don't lose stuff like this and keep it in a box or bin. Hi, hi Pat. Hey Paul, I'm working. All right, so we keep all my stuff in this little bin here. Doesn't get lost. Here we go. Hey, let's come off. Scooter Swap Shop Service Department. Hi, my name's Justin. I've got a, a Honda Helix that uh, you guys have done some work on before. Okay. And uh, I wanted to see about bringing it in and uh, having you guys swap the tires out. That uh, I've got a couple other miscellaneous parts oh. here, filters, and stuff like that. I'm about this. Uh, want to have you guys switch out? Okay, cool. Um, let me chat with uh, Dustin and see when were you wanting to bring it in. Uh, I was hoping to bring it by. Um, Oh yeah. Okay, give me a split second. Honda Helix. He said he has all the parts for it. Just wants us to put them all on. We'll get it tomorrow. Okay, I spoke with Dustin. Um, that's all good. You can drop it off uh, today or tomorrow if you'd like. And it sounds like he could probably get it in um, probably Wednesday or Thursday of this week to, to get the work done. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, we'll look forward to seeing you then and we'll get you all taken care of. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. So, take this little doodad off here. I'm gonna ruin this whole bike, Dustin. Just gonna break everything. Just feels wrong, just disassembling a brand new bike like this, though. Uh, Research and development. Research and development, that's right. You're absolutely right. That's how this bike is earning its keep. Uh-huh. Guessing the seat has to come off, too. Oh, dude. Weird, it has like a setting where it goes like vertical. So it sits here and you push it more and it goes, that's pretty cool. Probably to access the the bolts to get the seat off, but. Oh, Honda. Well, that's the nice thing about Honda. Typically, like there's a little tiny cover over here to access the valve cover. And they seem like they actually put some thought into servicing it. However, they do not make it very easy to install a cam. But in theory, the whole bike really has to come apart for what we're doing. I'm gonna try not to take off any more than that if I don't have to. And all the stuff has to come off if we're doing the build that we're gonna do anyway, so. Well, I was hoping I'd have a little, little powwow energy drink in here, but don't have anything today. That's a bummer. I had one today. Oh yeah? How you feeling? Um, uh, I, it was just a kind of a normal one. I only had one too, because I had like- Just one? Just one. You should start taking it intravenously. What? You should start just shooting it up. No. Bang. Hey, do you think Bang, no, would, do you think bang, bang would sponsor bang. Paul? Hey, we, we discussed Do you think Bang would sponsor before. him? He's not big enough following. I have a huge following. <laughs> <laughs> His mom. Did your mom follow you on Facebook or on Instagram? Uh. No, but my dad watches YouTube videos. Does he like him? He's like, you guys have all this stuff? <laughs> the only way to get sponsored by Bang is by tagging him a whole lot uh, oh. and having a big following. If anybody ever asks us to do a cam in an ADV, it's gonna be expensive. It costs a whole lot of money. Oh, yeah. What happened to our fruit snacks, Pat? Did you stop bringing them in? Out of stock. You're on a tight budget. You're out of stock. That's right. Hmm. Sorry. All right. We're gonna have to buy our own fruit snacks. I have chips in my car. You have chips in your car. I got stuff in the fridge too, but I'd rather have fruit snacks. You can't just cut us off like that. You should have yeah. slowly tapered us off. The... I, I did. He did. did? I, I totally did. Oh, there was he, like a couple days I didn't bring him in, then I gave him. A couple days I didn't bring him, I gave him. Yeah. yeah. But I like, like the, sorry. The heat of the summer, he was giving us like. Three each yeah, and they're like gelatinous too. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so on this bike, the water pump here um, is connected to the cam, so we've got to turn all the coolant, disconnect this whole system, so it's actually a pretty involved job to get to the cam. Um, anyways, you got all these parts in here, you guys can just download a diagram, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull the rest of the panels off, decided that this wasn't gonna work just doing the top, so gonna get this whole panel off the bike. Uh, you got some screws. Looks like you got some screws here on the inside up here and up here on both sides. Um, again, never taking the ADV apart, so it's all a little bit, well, it's 100% new for me. Um, get the screw back here, not sure how to get to that one, but anyways, we'll just start taking this entire thing apart and see if we can't get some better access.
you can come back and give me crap about the barn door oh. when you know how to, to fabricate a barn door. Oh. It's easy. I just need I a, thought, I need a whole day is what Rich I need. Huh? I thought Rich was going to help you with it. He said he was going to, but then he said what he really wanted was just to offer his advice. <laughs> So he did help you, just not in the way you were expecting. No, I wanted physical help, but she didn't help. All right, so what we're gonna do now, um, I'm on the fence of whether I wanna tear this whole bike apart, because I can theoretically get to that um, realistically. So I may just go ahead and take it off here. I'm having a, a mental battle as far as if I wanna do that or not. But we're gonna go and set this at TDC. Got the radiator off, got it drained. We're gonna set this at top dead center. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start to pull the drop valve train apart. And we'll see if we can get to it this way. All right, so we got top dead center here and you're looking for a line right here on your flywheel, a line up with this tab here. Another way you can check too, is you come around to the other side um, and you can see all your, your valve train is all loose here because you're at TDC. And also you pull your spark plug out and you feel the piston come all the way up. So there's three different ways to verify, but obviously you start with, um, uh, the flywheel and then just double check your work. So now that we've got um, TDC go ahead and take off the uh, Throttle body needs to come off to access the tensioner here, and then I've got to go ahead and remove um, Remove all this fun stuff here remove the water pump um, After that then we can start to, to take these these bolts off here and remove the cam It's funny people are intimidated with force or with two strokes, but it's like There's so much more shit on a four stroke than a two stroke That guy was cool. I'm watching guys' YouTube videos. You guys rock. Thank you so much. Just to make a video on the rough house. It's like there's there's not really there's just no there's no not enough rough houses to even justify doing something like that. There's a lot of rough houses. I should say there's not a lot of rough houses houses where people are actually paying to do things to them. You're right. Because most are just stolen. You're right. right. You're hundred <laughs> percent right. Let's get real here, Paul. I mean, yeah. If you own a rough house, there's a good chance you stole it. Oh. Or you bought it still from somebody who stole it for 200 bucks. Exactly. Yes. Oh, I 100% totally agree with you. Not as much as the buddies though. Buddies are worse. Oh, there's way more stolen buddies than rough houses in Boston at least. Buddies, you can go buy one for 200 bucks at the corner store. <laughs> at your corner store. Yep. <laughs> they, they have them all lined up up back. Ready to buy. Stolen. All pre-stolen for you. Pre-stolen rough houses. They, they snip the ignition wires, they rip the front panel up, but not enough where it cracks it, just enough where the tabs break. It's so they're 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 they're, they're doing you they're doing the, the hard work for you. Yeah. And then you could just buy it pre-stolen. What do you want to do for lunch, Brandon? Pat's not feeling what I'm feeling. What are you feeling? A burrito? Yes. Uh, it's gonna get chipotle. <sighs> What's Dustin doing? That's the real question. Hey, Dustin, what do you want to do? Is Dustin Dustin bring a lunch? What am I doing today? No, I haven't even thought about it, man. Paul, that's all Pat, Paul's been thinking about it all day. That's what he's been on his mind. Lunch, yeah. You should have washed this bike before you started taking it. Apart. I will never wash this bike, Paul. <laughs> Poor thing. Oh yeah, it's, it's it's pretty much wrecked now. This It's a pain uh, in the butt to get right to all this now, stuff. It's pretty much wrecked. Yeah. It's all taken up with the scooter swap shop. Okay, uh, what kind of moped? Moped. Moped. Okay, hold on one second. Let me just make sure that's something I want. Hey Dustin, do you want another 1982 Honda Urban Express? <laughs> 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 yeah, let's, let's bring it in. <laughs> no, are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey Paul, I got a better line for you. Hey, instead of saying on the phone, it's not my cup of tea, I want you to say it's not my can of bang. No, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> you don't drink tea though. Maybe that's the point. That. What? Drink tea before. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Dustin's not the moped guy. All right, we've got the water pump cover off. Now, looks like we're just gonna pull this guy off here. There we go. There's your water pump driven off the cam. I'm gonna leave it in that exact position where it's at just because uh, I don't really wanna mess. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off the uh, fuel injection lines that's in the way move these, um, this line at least, and just kind of clear some of the stuff out so we can have access to the cam. Um, not a whole lot to be had by taking that side panel off, I don't think. So we're gonna go ahead and try it this way and just kind of see what happens. Now, we can actually take the cam out. Should have just pulled the whole engine out. Looking at it now. Can you hold on to that guy? Yeah. Yeah. Unthread him here. Got her?
the top one off. All right, so looking back, so looking back on the ADV, I regret not pulling the whole motor out. Um, moving forward, doing any more work on the bike, I'll definitely pull the whole motor out, be a lot easier. This is pretty hard to get to. It's kind of tedious work, but I'll show you where we're at. So right now, we've taken off the, um, you're gonna take off your water pump stuff here, and then there's two four millimeter Allens. You're gonna pull those off as well. Once you pull those off, your timing chain, um, you're gonna go ahead and pull the sprocket out and then you're gonna zip tie your timing chain here. You just run a zip tie around the timing chain around here to make sure it doesn't fall back in the motor. Then you've got two bolts up here you're gonna take out and then you're just gonna slowly just kinda, of, you wanna loosen up your exhaust and intake valves and you're slowly just gonna kinda of roll this cam back and forth out this side. And now you guys can see why well, it would've been a lot easier just to pull the whole motor out. Um, but there's your cam, uh, gonna go ahead and start putting the new one back in but that's a little bit of a task i would say definitely be worth it to pull the whole motor out we can do another video on how to get the motor out because i i think you're going to do a better job um you can do a lot better job if you if you pull the whole motor out but try it this way it's it's definitely doable it's just uh it's quite the task so let's go ahead and uh get the new new cam in there all right so here we have the factory cam um and then we have the uh, prototype as you can see all these components are removed on this guy um, Insulation is gonna be the same as uh, as basically the opposite direction is taking it out gonna go and hit this with a little bit of um, Of lube and then we're gonna take this guy. We're gonna slide it in just like the old one came out once you slide it in we're gonna put our two um, two bolts in here and then we're gonna um, get the sprocket and the chain on it's a little bit hard to show you guys how all this stuff goes together just because the bike is um, the bike is in in the uh, or the engines inside the frame It'd be a lot easier if it was out of course but i'm gonna do my best to show you guys how this goes back together um, pretty straightforward if you're able to get your cam out at this point obviously you're going to be able to get it back in um, and then you're going to want to set your your spec on the intake and exhaust of course to, to factory spec as well all right so the bolts that we took out are these two guys here these two come out um, and then what i'm going to do now is i'm going to slide the cam in this direction find its home um, and then you've also got a, a 10 millimeter right here. That's what keeps the cam in place and your sprocket and everything goes on. So I'll start with sliding the cam and kind of getting that in, into position. A little bit of a pain, but. I'm actually gonna get in here just to kind of guide the cam in the right direction. Okay, so you hear the cam bottom out and that's the bearing. Uh, it's a cam bottoming out on this side here. So now that we've got the cam in place, um, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these two, uh, tighten these two guys down here, and then go ahead and work on getting the sprocket installed. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to give you the best perspective here, just because this is uh, a little bit of a pain in the butt to get to. Um, and I can kind of show you, since I have this extra cam, I can kind of show you guys how this goes back together. So this is sliding back in the bike. This is sliding back in the cylinder um, head. You wanna make sure this little detent here is facing down. So if, if you were to take the engine sideways, just like it's sitting and turn it this way, this cam is gonna sit in the bike just like this with the sprocket. So we've got the cam in place now. All your adjustments for your exhaust and intake are loose, which is where we want them. Now, what we're doing is a chain is just sitting down in here. So what we need to do is we need to get the sprocket in place. We need to get the chain around here. So this is where it's important to make sure your flywheel is at top dead center um, and make sure that this cam is sitting at top dead center as well. These two markings, you've got one and two. These two lines here are gonna be um, perpendicular or I'm sorry, parallel with the motor. So they're gonna sit just like this. Um, pretty easy to tell. I mean, in theory, if you go ahead and, and put this thing on um, and you get the cam lined up and your holes are off one way or the other, it's gonna be pretty obvious um, that your cam timing is off. I'm gonna go ahead and, and put this put this on the chain. Um, and, and I'm just explaining it this way because it's really hard to get in there and show you guys what's going on with your hands in there. It's not a whole lot of room. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the chain around this sprocket and, like this and then we're going to fit it on here um, once it's on here we're going to take these two uh, on the other side we've got two four millimeter allens that are going to go right here 
happen right here and those are going to get snug down to spec as well once you get those guys snug down and tightened down your cams in um, then you can go ahead and set your intake and exhaust clearance on your um, your valve what i like to do is once you kind of get everything locked down and bolted down and good i like to turn the motor over a couple times by hand to make sure um, and then roll it back around the top dead center and make sure this this the this is still parallel with your casting on your cylinder head also, before you before you roll it around, um, you get the cam, you get everything on, and then you're gonna put your um, tensioner on after. So again, just try to follow me with it. It's it's really hard to get the camera in there to show you guys exactly what's going on. But I'm gonna go ahead and and, uh, and get this sprocket on with the chain, get this guy tightened down, and then I'll show you guys the tensioner going back in and rolling it around it and showing you the marks at the top of the center to verify it's right. If you guys set this up. Um, and your cam is off a few degrees one or the other, um, it's probably not gonna run. And if it does, it's gonna run really poor and then you have a really good chance of bending your valves as well because your lobes are gonna be opening and closing your valves um, at the, the incorrect time. So make sure, uh, make sure you keep that in mind. One, the one mark here is on the bottom, the two is on the top, and this guy is sitting just like this in the bike. So let's go ahead and put this back together. So your zip tie here and cut this guy. Don't, uh, don't drop it down to the motor, whatever you do. You're gonna take your sprocket here. You're gonna work the chain over the top of your cam. And you're gonna take your sprocket. You know this is not fun. Basically, you're gonna work your chain over your sprocket like so. Like I said, not a whole lot of fun doing this guy. There you go. So we've got the chain over the sprocket. Let's go see how close we are. We know it's about where it's gonna sit. So we're still at TDC here, um, but as you can see, if you can see, actually, the uh, The markings are not right, so I've got to uh, just spin that clock, the sprocket around. Um, looks like counterclockwise. So this one, you can kind of just work it link by link and, and work the chain to roll that sprocket back to where it's flat. There, yeah, I just kind of like a little wave motion in that chain and roll that chain back a little bit to um, essentially turn this gear, uh, turn the sprocket counterclockwise. So I go forward a little bit, take this chain, lift it up and roll it around. Um, my guess is that's probably a little too far, but let's see, let's check it. So this is, would have been way easier with the, with the engine out. So I've said that a million times, but uh, yeah, I can't stress that enough. Just pull the motor out next time. This is kinda, kinda silly. Um, and we'll make a video on that as well, because uh, yeah, definitely would be easier with the motor out. Let's uh, see, that should be pretty cool. All right, so I feel pretty good about that. What I'm gonna do is take the, um, cam hardware, the two, these two guys, put them in, um, see if I can get a light in here, creep. So there you can kind of see the position of the cam, um, I just got to put those uh, four millimeters in there, um, but it looks pretty dang close to me, uh, and uh, so I'll snug those up and then just kind of roll it around, I'll snug them up, put the tensioner on and see where it sits, and just kind of roll the engine around a couple times to verify that it, that it is where it should be. All right, this part's probably the least fun um, to do with the motor in because you don't want to drop these. You don't want to drop these guys. So remember, when you push this tensioner down here, it's going to take that slack, so it's going to roll it back up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go and snug these up, um, and then you've also got a 10 millimeter bolt that's going to go in here as well. Um, this has got a washer on it that keeps your uh, cam from moving back and forth, in theory. So you can't really snug these up yet until you have somebody holding on the crank and you get your tensioner on, but um, I'm gonna double check everything, of course. All right, so where I'm at now is the cam's in the bike. Um, the valves are, are super loose. Um, I've got these two guys are snugged up here. 10 millimeter on the back side is tight. I've got the sprocket lined up right um, and I've, I've just got those two four millimeter Allen's just snugged up right now. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys on the other side kind of um, 
so you can see what's going on. The next step after this, after you got everything tight in the torque to spec, torque to spec, um, the next step is going to be this tensioner. Um, you're gonna put the tensioner back in, and here's here's the tensioner. And the way this works is you guys have got a little flat blade in here. You go ahead and take the Phillips off the top. You're gonna put a flat blade in here, and you're gonna just take this guy and you screw it in. It just drives that in as well. So you can't just take it and shove it in. You have to back it off like this, hold it, set it on the bike, bolt it down, and then, and then let this loose. And that's going to put tension down on the um, the timing chain tensioner. So uh, again, going to go ahead and put this on uh, and then double check to make sure that um, everything is timed properly. I'm going to turn the hand, um, turn the motor over twice by hand, just by the flywheel, double check everything, check the cam. Um, again, the valve's really loose right now, I'm not concerned about that, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just check to make sure um, the cam is timed right with the engine and make sure there's nothing funky going on. So let's go ahead and, uh, and pop this guy back in the bike. And the only reason I took this throttle body off was to access this bolt down here as well. I'm going to, going to go ahead and show you guys this shot over here, see if I can show you kind of how this is lined up, and then roll the motor around twice. All right, so the next step, <clears throat> tighten these two four millimeters up. We're gonna snug them up while holding onto the flywheel here. Um, once we get these two snugged up, then we can get a kind of a rough um, adjustment on these valves as well. I've already rolled the, ro the motor around twice to make sure that it's timed properly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and snug these guys up, just kind of double check over everything. Uh, and then we can make our adjustments here to spec. Um, or get them close at least, because this motor is cold. Um, put our throttle body back on and just kind of start reassembling the bike. All right, so verified, rolled it around. Um, I torqued these two nuts here. This tends on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this water pump stuff back on. Really, really simple to do. Um, I didn't rotate this, so in theory this should all go kind of right back in place once this goes in place um, then this cover is going to slide back over so you've got a um, little locating pin in here that's going to locate on the crank so it'll be pretty hard to do it wrong don't force it it should just slide right in There it is. So again, you can see this is hooked to the cam. Um, so it just slides in, just slides in and just locks right in place. So once that goes in, um, then this cover is gonna go on next, just like so. And then you're gonna put your hardware back in there, tighten that down. The um, eight millimeter is gonna go all the way up here in the front. Got an Indian scammer here on the phone. All right, so down here, you've got this guy right here. And you've got this guy right here, 10 millimeters. Hey, 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 is this how you use this thing? Hey, 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 I waited all the way down to I was calling number one, and they said the user's on the other line to leave a voicemail, and then it said the voice will not set up, and it hung up on me. <laughs> oh, is this how you wear this GoPro? Is this how this works? It's kind of hard to see. Maybe look at the mirror. I don't care. Oh, where's the mirror? Oh, yeah. 
You tell me it's a hat one. Oh, it looks good. Look at this. Look at the side profile. <laughs> bags. If they gave me more bags, I'm gonna lose it. These are bags. Ooh, are those all stickers? Manifold, logo, mold. Where's your knife? Good employee should always have a knife. I thought it'd be a bigger box for how expensive all this stuff was. Did you try? You did, so you couldn't pull it. Uh, I didn't try very hard. So you didn't try very hard. What you're saying is you can't pull this, right? Okay, do you want to pull and I'll push? No, 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 I'm gonna try to pull by myself. Because okay. you don't have the torque to pull it in. Pat could do it. Could he? Oh. oh yeah, how did you strap it? You didn't strap it at all. You're trying yeah. to kill me, dude. It was hooked, it was hooked on there. It wasn't hooked on anything. Jeez. Let's see if I can. Such a horrible idea. Workman's comp. Oh yeah, it's really heavy. <laughs> all right, all right, let's uh. Oh, it was really heavy. Let's get it right. There we go. Damn, you're so strong. All the torques. Torque, torque, torque. That can't, There, there's another big Melosi order. This is a small one. Get in here. Snug this guy out. Water pump's on. Put a little rubber hose here. Go ahead and work your clamp back on here. Slide it down. There you go. What? Paul, get to work. Get to work, Paul. He's not working. I'm loitering. Hello? One now. To be placed. Multitasking. Good day, man. What do I have to miss her speaking with? Tad. Hi, how are you today, sir? I, I'm doing good. That's perfect. Yeah. Showing there we have a couple of vacation packages that you are okay. Uh huh. And please understand that this is a limited time offer. Okay. Oh, I've been on vacation in like three years. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. So we've got the um exhaust valve here and we can put the specs down below um exhaust valve is a little bit of pain to get to but we um got her done so we're gonna go ahead and snug up the exhaust uh the intake is good so again just kind of go over everything as well um but we should be able to fire this thing up here pretty soon yeah definitely gonna be pulling this motor out for the rest of the work that we do not doing this again in the bike more or less because it's not very easy for me to show you guys uh what we're doing here it's too difficult to get a good good look on into uh what's going on well we're good need to just go back over everything and uh mm, something wrong with you mm. yes go back over everything and put it back what's your together. favorite flavor of red loctite brandon no what's your favorite flavor of loctite I red lots red? of red red or blue i like red loctite well no on Exhaust for people who are really mean to us. Have you tasted Lots of bread. Red no, I haven't tasted it all. I've, I have, but not on purpose. It tastes good. No, it's terrible. No, it tastes good. It's cherry. Good. It's not. <laughs> the blue's blueberry. There's something wrong with you, dude. Get out of here. Go on. Try to taste better than your farts. <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect my farts to taste like cherry, Paul. All right, I'm gonna tighten the water pump here. Then we will get the radiator back on and we'll pray for the best. All right, don't need to do a uh, gasket here. It's really clean. So um, let's go ahead and put this valve cover back on. Take this guy down here. And actually, I'm gonna turn this thing around a few times. Something to keep in mind when you guys have this motor set up, the um, <clears throat> the process when you put the cam in, um, you want to be top dead center like we talked about, and then on this um, on this, uh, how can I explain it? Basically, you're going to take this cam when you're top dead center on your compression stroke. You're going to slide the cam in this direction. You're going to rotate it around 180 degrees, and your cam's going to sit just like this. Your 
sprocket is gonna have the one on the bottom, the two on the top, and the logo up this direction. So make sure, um, make sure it's in that orientation. Rotate it around a few times to make sure it stays in that orientation as well. Um, we, uh, um, we got everything, cam is in, locked down. Um, and again, this is one of those things where you wanna just double check everything. I know I've said it a million times, but I can't stress that enough. Um, gonna go ahead and make our, uh, make our valve adjustments now, get it dialed in. And uh, once we get our valves adjusted, we can uh, fill this thing back up with oil and, and party on. All right, so you guys wanna get in here, adjust the spec. All right, get your little feeler gauge in here. Looks like that guy is a nine. Okay, so that's your intake. Okay, intake's good. I'm going to check exhaust. It's a little bit harder to get to. But at this point, I would think you guys would probably be aware of how to check your guys' um, valve clearance here. Okay, I need Paul to tell this is motor oil. So I need to smell my finger. That's oil. Motor oil or two stroke oil? Mm, that's a tough one. It's <laughs> yeah. not, it smells like motor oil mixed. It's, go smell the exhaust. It smells like motor oil. Paul's a sniffer. I, it. I smelled it. I mean, I guess that may not be the problem, but it kind of stinks. It's like it smells, yeah. It's a, just a mess right now. Um, but we've got the oil drained out, got the cap back on. What we're gonna do is come around to this side. Um, you can use 1030 or 1040, and the uh, Honda specs out 0.8 liter, so that's almost a full liter. Um, what I'm gonna do here is uh, just pour the bulk amount of it in, and then um, I'll put the dipstick in, see where it lands, and, and then what you wanna do is you wanna start the bike, warm the bike up, shut it off, take the dipstick out, dry it again. It's just like you would do on a, on a car, essentially. We're just gonna use the Motul 7100 full synthetic, just because we have it in the shop and it's really good stuff. Get your funnel in here. All right, we have oil on the bike. Used uh, Motul 1040. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use some uh, engine ice uh, coolant. Fill the coolant back up. Make sure all the clamps, slide these clamps and everything back down. Get them on the location. Uh, looking through here, we've got the valve cover on. We have the throttle body back on. We've got a little clip here for the fuel injector. We've got a few little miscellaneous um, mounting brackets, so I need to put this on, bolt this guy on as well. So there's a few things that I, I, I still need to do, um, but I'm not gonna put all the panels back together. It doesn't really make sense at this point. I need to put the exhaust on the bike, um, start it, make sure it runs good, uh, make sure it's got proper lubrication, the cooling system is um, all together, so. Put our water water in here. Oh, my clamps here. Okay, down. Now I'm just gonna take a peek to see if there's anything else going on loose. Uh, workplace is a mess. We're designing um, floorboards as well. So this whole bike is just being used for all kinds of good stuff. There she goes. You wanna get that little lip there to bottom out or you're gonna have an air leak. It's not gonna run so hot. All right, we have some coolant in the bike. We've got oil on the bike. Um, just need to put the exhaust on. Again, we're uh, working on different exhaust systems right now. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put the stock exhaust on for now. All right, time to put this. Ooh, wait a minute. I need an exhaust gasket. Leave the spark plug out right now just to make sure it turns over, it doesn't spark. We have oil on the bike, we have coolant in the bike. I'm gonna do a quick once over. Uh, water pump stuff is on, nice and tight. Looks like all the clamps are on, fuel lines on, throttle body. Uh, should be good to go, unless I'm missing anything, but let's uh, see what, let me crank it over. I got the spark plug disconnected just so I could get some oil up in this. See what happens.
Could be a little noise here, or it's the injector too. The valves are a little, I did them a little bit on the loose side, just because it wouldn't be driven so down far, you know, so far into it. All right, we ran the bike for a minute. Gonna go ahead and pull the dipstick, clean it off, check how much is in it. Um, if it's got too much in it, we'll empty a little bit out. Um, needs more, we'll put some more in, but after you put oil in, you always wanna run the bike, kinda circulate it in the system, um, get the oil to the top of the head and everything, and then you wanna check, shut it off, and then check, um, check your oil level. So let's go ahead and uh, check the oil level, see where we're at. Sorry, this is a, a total disaster right now. I've been going 100 miles an hour, so. Let's see, clean this off here. 